Hey kids, this is Eric Miller here, and this is hopefully my new carry gun, the brand new Caltech P15. And I can say that the last time I was this early to a new gun was, uh, never. Since this is shown at SHOT Show in January of 2022, I've been itching to get my hands on one. Apparently, so have some other people, because as of right this second as I'm filming this, someone is bidding over $500 for one on GunBroker. Now, the original MSRP was $425, but in the past year they were manufacturing these, inflation has hit pretty hard, and the current MSRP is now $450. Nonetheless, I was able to pick this one up at k-var.com. They are not a sponsor. They don't know I'm making this video. But I'm just mentioning it but I because I got it for only $310. And I'm sorry, they're already sold out. Plus, $20 for shipping and another $25 at the gun store for the transfer. So out the door, this was $355, and I'm pretty happy with that. So I was very curious about the many mysteries surrounding this gun, and I can now take it apart and share a few of them with you. And at the end, we'll see how it did at the range. For starters, the main reason this gun attracted me so much was the weight and the size and the features and the price. It just all added up to something that I was interested in. So let's stack it up against my old carry gun, the CZ82. Now, I love this gun, it's great, but when I started carrying it again recently, something about it really hit me. It's really heavy. The thing is all steel, and it is really heavy for such a small gun. And if we throw it on the scale here, it is a beefy little boy at one pound, eight ounces unloaded, and just under two pounds with uh, 12 rounds of 9mm Makarov included. We can see that it's not much lighter than my full-size duty pistol, the LH9. The difference there is that it has an aluminum frame. Surprisingly, the weight on the kel is exactly as the website says. 14 ounces without a mag, and loaded with 15 rounds of 9mm, it's still lighter than the unloaded CZ82. Let's talk about the grip. It's very small. The gun looks weird because the grip and the frame look like a sub or micro compact size, like a SIG P365, but the slide looks like it belongs to a much larger compact gun. The gun fits my extremely medium-sized hands pretty well with the exp extended 15 round magazine, and it's very grippy, which is uh, something you really want in any gun, but especially in a smaller carry gun like this. If the grip is a little too small to your liking, you can always add on this backstrap extension, and I can tell you it feels a lot nicer with this on for me. The mag release is also pretty low profile and a little stiff, which is exactly what you would want on a carry gun, especially one with the magazine disconnect. This isn't a competition gun, it's not a duty pistol, you're not gonna be, need to be swapping multiple mags within 10 seconds. This mag release is good for its intended purpose as a carry gun. The trigger is pretty nice for a striker gun. There's some take up, it's sponge, 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 and then break. Uh, the other nice thing is the trigger itself is made of metal and it feels really nice. This gun has a chassis sim system and is also made mostly from aluminum. Now, an early thing that I've heard that people are saying is that this trigger might be too light for a carry gun. So how light is it? I've been measuring uh, mine pretty consistently between four and three quarters pounds and five and one quarter pounds. Uh, I, would, I wouldn't say that that is dangerously feather light. I would say it is pleasantly light. The sights are nice, easy to see, but with uh, not a lot of air in between them, fortunately. They are also all three glow-in-the-dark night sights, so bonus there. The rear sight is adjustable for windage and elevation, and on TFB TV, James mentions that the rear sight is walking to one side as they fired it, and I, I checked mine, and it was loose out of the box. So you will need to put a dab of blue like Loctite in it. Slide serrations are very good. The slide treatment is outstandingly mediocre and would probably wear fairly quickly, uh, but time will tell. Another bonus feature we have here is a tactile loaded chamber indicator. One of the gun's mysteries to me was this back piece here. I can confirm it is plastic and not ready for optics. However, removing these four screws allow you to take this off, and what I'm thinking, or rather hoping, is that Caltech will be producing a number of different blocks with different footprints on it for different red dots. Uh, so I'm totally guessing here, but let's say you had a particular red dot, you'd look it up on Caltech's website, purchase the corresponding piece that would replace uh, this back part on the slide. I mean, I don't know, there's nothing on the website yet, so again, this is early days. 
And now, a word from our sponsor. Get down to the Wiffle Hose and try the new Szechuan Chicken Nugwads, made from 100% Angus beef. Then try on our new and improved Waffle Blouse, still the same authentic waffle flavor, but now with enhanced waffle texture. Sweet, sold separate. Wiffle Hose, take a whiff. Thanks. Taking the gun apart is similar to other Browning type systems where you pull the slide back a little bit and you can see here on the P15 that a notch in the slide tells you exactly where to put it. And then there's a small groove cut in the slide release that should perfectly fit a spent 9mm case, which you can then use to pry it out. If you have everything in exactly the right spot, this comes out and goes back in super easily. Uh, the trick is just, you know, getting it there. Like most striker-fired guns, the trigger on the P15 needs to be pulled before disassembly, and then once the slide release is out, the slide should just slide off the front. Okay, so to make this gun California legal, we've got two safeties that people don't like. A magazine safety, which I don't like, and a grip safety, which I'm totally okay with. Um, I can see why people would hate the uh, grip safety, because the 1911, the most perfect gun ever made, has a grip safety, and that's why grip safeties are bad. In the back of the frame, there's a screw, and if you turn that screw clockwise, you can change which mode the gun is in, and there are three. Mode one has all safeties on. Mode two has all safeties off. Mode three, and probably the mode I will use, uh, turns off the magazine safety, but keeps the grip safety active. Just as a quick demo, the magazine safety is this little bar on the outside of the magwell. When it's pointing kind of in a downward direction, the gun can't fire. Inserting the magazine will push the bar up, making the gun active. In mode two or three, this bar will stay in the upward or lifted position. In mode two, the grip safety will also retract, indicating that it's not doing anything. Short story time, last Mother's Day, or this Mother's, whatever, uh, James from TFB TV gave his mom a gun, a Smith & Wesson EZ in 380. The problem his mom had with this gun was that she needed to have this perfect, really strong death grip on the gun in order to activate the gigantic grip safety. Uh, I don't like that, especially for a carry gun when you may not have time or opportunity to get a super perfect grip on the gun. Okay, so let's find out how strict our grip safety is. So, cock the striker, we will push it all the way in, and we will pull back a little bit, and it's still fired. Good to know. Let's try again. We will pull out a little bit more. Still fired. And we'll give it a little bit more still. And now, now it won't fire. So it needs to be in about this far. About, I don't know, 75% of the way in, 80%. That's good. That basically means that if you don't have a perfect grip on the gun and if it's not, you don't have a death grip on the gun, it'll still go. It'll still fire. And uh, that makes me feel better about having this activated. So if we can back up for a second, how can you use the grip safety if you also put the back strap on the gun? Well, fortunately, kel included a button extender that will allow you to use both simultaneously. FYI. I mean, this grip module is just feather light. It's very neat. The slide is fairly standard. There are two captive recoil springs and a four inch barrel, which looks huge coming out of this tiny gun. There is a circular clip spring in the front of the slide to keep the guide rod in, and don't mess around with this if you value your sanity. Uh, in the back of the slide, you can see this cylinder thing. That is the end of this screw that's keeping the back cover piece on. So only this screw is very long and very special, and it interacts with the striker. So don't lose the screw. Lastly, let's talk about these mags. So these are 12 round magazines with three round extensions on them. And apparently kel has a patent on this new extending technology. I really wanted to see how it worked, but I can't get the thing apart. There's a thing here that you push down and you can start to slide the base plate off, but then the spring gets in the way and basically I can't get it open without breaking something. So I'm sure there's a trick to this somehow and I'm hoping that somebody in the future will post a video on it. But this magazine is impressive. But it's not a P15 mag, it's a magazine from the P11, the gun this gun replaces. And it's not even a P11 mag, it's a Smith & Wesson 59 series mag, which is cool. A lot of guns have copied the Smith & Wesson design and borrowed their magazines. Uh, like the Daewoo K5, uh, DP51, and Lionheart LH9. 
just like this gun. So both of these mags are Smith & Wesson 59 pattern magazines and both are made by Mechgar. So I'll see if I can try out my Daewoo Lionheart mag at the range, uh, we'll see. These are both 15 round magazines, but you can see how much smaller the kel magazine is. It's like almost in, uh, you know, half an inch to an inch shorter. I mean, that's just fantastic. By the way, you get two mags with the gun. Only one has the three round extension on it. The other one is just standard 12 rounds. And extra, by the way, is that this gun also comes in this plastic case and has this cute little pouch to put your gun in. Okay, well, I have taken the gun to the range and... I'm gonna to have to save that for a second separate video. We'll talk about that later. Here, we just have a good overview of the gun and all the little bits and pieces and goodies and whatnot. So until next time, stay safe, have fun kids.